Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to our uh, Sunday school lesson for Thanksgiving. Uh, today we'll be doing a special lesson. Uh, it's called Give Thanks to God. So we're kind of stepping out of our normal um, normal uh, series that we've been doing on Abraham. And we'll be talking today about giving thanks to God since we are coming up on that time of Thanksgiving. Today is Sunday, November 21st, so if you have your Sunday school books there at home, you can join me, or you can open your Bibles today. We'll be looking at Psalms 100. Uh, Psalms 100. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. So I just pray today that you're, uh, you're having a great day and you've had a great week, and I pray today that you're healthy and well. Uh, thank you for being with us. I look forward to this time every week of being able to... Uh, just share uh, the Sunday School lesson with you. And uh, thank you for the feedback that I've heard from some of you. I do appreciate the, that time that we have together. Uh, uh, even though I don't get to see you face to face, I do get to uh, correspond with you occasionally uh, through email or uh, through, through your text. But thank you, and I appreciate you uh, joining us today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer as, uh, before we begin our lesson. And uh, we'll just uh, pray that the God would bless us today as we, as we uh, study his word. Lord, we do ask you today, Father, that you would just uh, today, Father, um, show us in your word, Father, how we should be thankful. Lord, give us, uh, give us uh, uh, peace today, Lord. Give us a heart, Father, for others. Father, give us a heart that we can be thankful, Father, for for all that you've done for us, and Father, for most of all, for salvation. So, Lord, today I pray for each one who's at home. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, I, some are some may be sick. Some may still be being cautious over COVID. Uh, some may have had to work. Uh, I, I don't know the situation, but you do, Lord, and I just pray for them. I pray that um, they will be, uh, that they feel well and Father, that this lesson will speak to them today as it has spoken to me as I've studied it. Lord, I pray that your word would be uh, heard today and not, not my words, but it's your words. And Father, we know that your word never returns void. So today I pray that you would use your word, uh, Father, just to help someone or Father, to, to comfort someone or Father, maybe to remind someone of their need for you. But Father, whatever it is, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory for everything it's you do, for it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. So I said the title of the lesson is Give Thanks to God. So today we're, we're going to look at Psalms 100. Um, Thanksgiving Day is acknowledged by many people, uh, even those father who are, are, uh, may not be thankful for, for their church or may not even have a church, but, but Thanksgiving is a day that was uh, set aside um, for the church and the unchurched, when uh, when uh, our our uh, nation was founded with the pilgrims and the Indians returning thanks for what they've been given, but our Thanksgiving as Christians, uh, our thanks should be directed to God. It should be directed to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So it's it's uh, people often miss. The, uh, the, the object of thanksgiving, who is the provider of all that we have, our creator, our sustainer, our, our giver of life, uh, and, and he is the one that we should be thankful to. The ultimate object of our thanks should be to God, because when we're thankful for, for our blessings, then he's the one that has provided those. So we, we want to look at Psalms 100 today, as it serves as a good reminder to us of who God is, and what he has done and why we should thank him. And I pray that you can look in your own life and you can see uh, the goodness of God. Uh, even in hard times, we can see the goodness of God because he has provided so much for us. And uh, we're, we're, we're so blessed to live in the nation that we live in, to live in this part of the, the country, to be here in South Carolina and Anderson County in this area. We're so blessed uh, to have uh, good homes and and uh, protection that we have. And I just pray that the whole nation could experience uh, what what Christ wants for them and uh, in, in their lives. And if, if they look at Psalms 100, they can see uh, how David was so thankful. 
and then maybe it would trigger us to be more thankful as well. Um, Psalms 100, we look at verses 1 and 2 first. Uh, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing or with thanksgiving. Um, there was uh, some royal psalms that had to do with, with the royalty or honored and king. Uh, and there were wisdom psalms. There were, there were songs, psalms about wisdom. And uh, there were lament psalms that, in, that uh, portrayed the, the injustice of life and the suffering of righteous people who lamented and, uh, and they, they hoped for vindication. But um, most of the lamented psalms uh, were for hope that God would hear and deliver people uh, from, uh, from their uh, circumstance that they may be in. And uh, these, these psalms, though, were not without encouragement. About half the psalms, directly or indirectly, offer a praise to God. So even in all these psalms, uh, about half of them offered praise to God. 26 of the Psalms, about one-sixth of the total collection of Psalms, uh, are straightforward hymns of praise that were offered to God. Uh, they, they, they often had the element of thanksgiving in those hymns of praise to God, uh, thanking God for what he had done. And Psalms 100 is uh, one of many uh, what we call community worship materials. Um, Psalms are intended to be sung as part of a communion, a communal, communal worship, rather than an individual psalm of praise. So, so these psalms were sung there in the in the in the uh, the, the worship meetings and the praise meetings. Um, we we always are to worship God, whether we're alone or whether we're in a, a church setting or whether we're together with other people. We are always to worship God, but there's always a value in the in uh, that that's dear to my heart that comes from corporate worship. But when we're worshiping together as uh, saints in Christ, when we we set aside a place for worship, and I think that's biblical that that we do that. So it's it's important that uh, that we worship God uh, either when we're alone. Or as a family, or as as uh, as a church, we are to worship God, and it means so much to my heart to hear our praise team and our choir, and to join them in singing and worshiping God and lifting our praises to Him. We do a lot of songs in our church that are praise and and worship songs, and and it's just praising God and praising Christ for for what they've done for us. The writer here uh, wrote that we should praise the Lord. Uh, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh, and some of us, uh, when we sing, our, we do make a noise. Hopefully it's joyful. Uh, but uh, if you're like me, I'm, I'm not a singer per se, but I love to sing. And I love to make a noise, a joyful noise unto the Lord. But the writer here said that all ye lands. He wasn't talking about just the, just the corporate church, the worshiping area. But all the lands must praise the Lord. Uh, sometimes in the Old Testament, uh, isolated Israel as God's unique territory or God's chosen nation. But, but um, the the writer here said, "Praise ye the Lord, all in all the lands." In Deuteronomy, it says, "Only the Lord had the delight in the fathers to love them, and He chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day." But this is, this is true uh, that Scripture speaks of God's Word for all of, all of the world. God loved Israel. God, that was their chosen nation. That's where uh, the, the lineage of, of David or David would be, and, and the lineage of Christ would come from, from that chosen group. But God sent His Son to die for all of us and to, to give His life and shed His life and to, uh, to be... Uh, uh, tortured to be uh, crucified and to rise again the third day after three days and to uh, give his life so that we could have salvation so we as believers today uh, we we have a better understanding of God's love based on that revelation of Jesus Christ as his son you see in the Old Testament uh, David's love for God was based on uh, 
his dependence on God and what God provided for him. And uh, the the Old Testament reflects a progressive understanding of God. Uh, God was um, was uh, not seen uh, by many. Uh, God's presence was made known to to people. Uh, prophets prophesied about Christ, and the Old Testament pointed toward the cross. So people, uh, in various ways and in various means, they came to know God for who He was, and they came to know Him more fully, uh, progressively, through the writings of of different different. Uh, people that God had had uh, had given the the word that they would uh, record uh, and would become to, known to us as the Old Testament. The writer of Hebrews noted God who at sundry times and in, in different manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophet. And he hath in these last days spoken to us by his son. You can find that in Hebrews 1 and, and uh, verses 1 and 2. So, with as children, we've been taught that uh, about God and about how God loved the world, and for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Um, and, and John uh, spoke about that in in uh, in John three sixteen when he wrote that scripture, and then John in Revelation spoke of people of every kindred and every tongue. Um, and people of, of every nation offering praise to the Lord and, and praise to the Lord as, as priest in Revelation 5. And you look in verses 9 through 10, you can find that. You see, in Christ, there is no boundaries. There is no east or west. There is no uh, north or south. Uh, he is known as throughout the world. And he has come for all of those throughout the world to come to know him as their Lord and Savior. Um, so in Christ, there is there is one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide world, the, how, throughout every uh, part of this earth. There should be a central uh, central uh, understanding of love and fellowship that Jesus Christ provides us. The writer ex exhorted the worshipers to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Um, sometimes worship uh, was cries of victory, cries of singing. Uh, worship was often spirited. It often had uh, movement, dancing, and, um, and exclamations of praise. David, King David once danced before the Lord with all his might as he jubilantly strode in the procession of the bringing of the Ark of the Covenant, covenant to its new home. So there is uh, singing and dancing and praising a God for who he is and what he's done uh, that we see there in the Bible. Martin Luther once remarked that in singing, we all become preachers, telling the, the good news of Jesus Christ. So when we sing, we're proclaiming the good news. We're proclaiming praise and worship to, to Christ. Um, corporate, so, corporate singing is, is a significant part of our worship here in church, joining our hearts and our voices together to lift up Christ and to praise him and to honor him. Um, and just as singing the Star Spangled Banner uh, brings us together as a nation, uh, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, singing uh, the Star Spangled Banner uh, ignites something in us that we, we pull together for our nation. Singing Happy Birthday recognizes a person that has aged another year, and, and that singing as a family or as friends brings us together again with one common point. So when we as a congregation or as Christians, we sing and we praise the Lord. It's uniting our hearts together for one common purpose. And that's, the, that's as the family of God to praise and worship our God, our creator, the one who has provided our, li uh, our, our lives and our, our, our breath and, and provides everything we need. He sustains our life. Uh, in verse 2, it says, serve the Lord with gladness. Uh, this is an imperative word. It's not a suggestion, but it says we are to serve the Lord with gladness. And our service should be uh, a happy service. It should not be one that we feel like we're required to do, but it's one that we're honored to get to do. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence or his throne with thanksgiving. Um, we, we, uh, we are to worship God. Serving the Lord with gladness is worshiping him in gladness. 
we we serve him by gathering uh, in his name and offering praise to him. We serve him by by uh, singing together, not trying to uh, outdo each other with good works, but joining together that the word of the Lord can be brought to to all people. Uh, we we serve together. In Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, it said, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love good and to love and to good works, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. It, and, and we are to, to join together. This is, a, this is important that we do. We continue to serve God in our own devotion and in our practices, but we are called to join together. Um, we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And his, his word tells us that, that we are to assemble together as his people, as a church, to, to worship him. And he says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. We worship him with gladness. We sing with gladness. Uh, so, so we make a joyful noise and we serve him and we come together as Christians. This is what Psalms 100 is telling us to do as Christians. Uh, a, a single uh, worship event may uh, evo evoke a, a number of emotions uh, as it unfolds. Uh, it may be a time when we become very solemn and we think about sin that's in our life and we acknowledge that sin and we ask forgiveness. It may be a time of confession before the Lord when we, uh, when we feel that the word has spoken to us as the pastor has preached or as the songs were sung. It may move something within us. The Holy Spirit may move that cause us to confess some sin. Or it may be that the Holy Spirit removes, moves within us to call us to a uh, salvation, a, a salvation experience of trusting God and, and repenting of our sins and turning towards Him. Uh, sometimes worship, uh, hearing His word read or hearing the praises sung, it causes us to realize the disobedience that we have in our life to his commands. So, so when we join together, there's many things that can happen uh, as we worship. And, and God will, will use those things to bring us closer to him. If, if we have a dirty heart or, or dirty things in our life that need to be clean, if we can have those things forgiven and we repent of those things and we turn away from them, it makes our heart more joyful so uh so we join in together and and we become happy we acknowledge that, that god's uh, we acknowledge his mercy we acknowledge his forgiveness we acknowledge what he's done on the cross for us and what he's he sent his son to die for us and we can acknowledge all that and and we can we can praise him for the salvation he's provided um singing hymns of salvation and hymns about heaven it it, it 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 makes our joy even greater than it is when we come into worship we have we we join together and and become more uh more joyful or uh i don't know if joyful or is a word but we 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 have more joy in our heart than we've ever had before psalms 122 verse 1 reminds us that i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord so when we come to the house of the lord we should come with an attitude of praise, an attitude of worship, coming to serve Him, coming to, coming uh, with joy and thanksgiving, uh, making joyful noise, uh, worshiping together, uh, coming with gladness and, and into His presence and singing thanksgiving. Verse 3 says, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Uh, the psalmist uh, uh, offered the foundation uh, for the uh, joyful praise that we're to have. We praise God for three reasons, major reasons. First of all, we know that that Yahweh is God. Uh, we know that the Lord, He is God. Yahweh is God. He is our Creator. It's more than just um, a merely a head knowledge. It's, it's more than just just uh, knowing Him. Uh, the Bible tells us that the that that the devils know Him, the demons know Him, and they tremble. But it's more than a head knowledge. It's knowing that that uh, he is Yahweh. He is the Creator. He is the, He is love. He is all the things that the Bible tells us that He is, uh, and and us knowing Him is reflected in our life, and it's reflected in what we say and what we do. Um, so it's not just a 
not just a head knowledge, but it's a personal uh, relationship with God. Uh, know ye that the Lord, he is God. Know ye that Lord, the Lord is, he is your God. And it's having a personal relationship that, that makes a difference in how we live our lives and how we believe and, uh, and how, how we act when we're not at church, when we are just there with, with those, uh, who, who, uh, or our family, or our friends, or our work, wherever it may be. But it is the Lord our God, Yahweh our Lord. Uh, in the Old Testament, Testament um, uh, there was uh, the the Lord was some sometimes was spelled in lowercase L O R D, lowercase, and it was a it was a referring to just other gods or other lords but the lord that we're talking about is capital l capital o capital r capital d and that was a way to express a sacred name of god himself um it's the name by which moses identified himself that the lord uh, identified himself to moses there when he was asked whom who he should say that sent him uh to free to egypt to free god's people uh Exodus 3, 14 says, Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and thou shalt say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, un, and he said Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent you. Yahweh, I am the name Yahweh is deri derived from the phrase or the, trans or the verb translated "I am." Yahweh and I am basically mean the same thing. He is the God. He is the only God. He is the Creator. Um, the Bible never gives dignity to any other God other than God, our Lord and Savior, our Father. Um, Paul said, "We we know that an idol is nothing in the world." And there is none other God but one. 1 Corinthians 8, 4 tells us that. Thus we worship the Lord because he is the only God and there is none else. It is this God who has sought after us in our sinfulness with the offer of pardon and salvation. Uh, this is what the Bible is written about. It's about our pardon and our salvation is through Yahweh, through God sending his son, God taking on the form of man and coming here on this earth to live and to die for us. He is the only living God, and he is the only source of mercy and forgiveness. Second, we realize that not only do we know who he is, that he is Yahweh, our the Lord, our God, but second, we realize that he hath made us. He is our creator. He said, Know ye that the Lord, he is God? It is he that hath made us. He made us. He, uh, he, he transcends all creation. He, he's there from the beginning to the end. He, he can see everything. He understands everything. He knows our next move. He knows when we'll take our next breath and when we take our last breath. He is uh, <clears throat> separated from the world from the point that he is the creator, but he joins us from the point that he loves us and he wants us to worship him. He wants us to know him as our Lord and Savior. We don't worship creation uh, we don't worship the things of creation, but we worship the Creator. Now, I've I've had friends uh, when I worked at Michelin that were from other countries. Uh, Japan was one in particular, where the the young man told me that his family had hundreds of gods. They worshipped the moon, they worshipped the sun, they worshipped the trees, they worshipped the flowers. They had, everything was a god to them. But we don't worship the creation. We worship the God that created everything you see he is worthy of praise he is worthy of worship he's the one who sustains our life he is the one who has sent his son to die for us these trees and flowers and animals and everything else has done nothing for us to provide us eternal life and no man has done anything for us other than jesus christ himself god infinite god man he's the one that came and he died for us that we could have salvation Paul lamented that evil people worship things uh, created rather than the creator. In Romans 1, 25, Paul says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who, who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who has worshipped 
and serve the creature more than the creator um who is the creator that is blessed forever so paul said you have you have worshiped the the cre the creature uh more than you've worshiped the creator and we should worship the creator not the what he has created uh more than simply caring about the things of the world we need to care about who made the world our god our savior uh he gave us life and he sustains our life in this beautiful world and 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 unlike the false god who has no life or or cannot give life our god is a living god and he still lives and he still provides life unto us um the response of our gratitude for the gift of creation is is should be a natural component of worship we should thank god for the things he's given us we should thank god for creation we should thank god for sustaining our life and and we do that through prayer and we do that through worship and song we do all of those things thirdly it says the people know joy because god watches over us um he, it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture think about what a shepherd does a shepherd um is the one who watches over the sheep um the the shepherd puts the sh his sheep's safety ahead of his own uh the shepherd is is uh, values the sheep more than he does his own life and, and if you look at what christ did for us he gave up his life for us that we could have salvation and there's so many people that still reject that salvation but he loved us that much and he is our shepherd uh, the, the shepherd would always step in front of the flock to protect them uh, david uh, told of battling a lion and a bear to protect the flock in first samuel uh, the, the the lord is our defender uh, he, he's the defender of our people Jesus declared, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep in John 10, 11. Uh, a lot of artists will portray Jesus uh, standing with the shepherd's staff and gently holding a lamb in his arms. This is the image of the, the shepherd uh, continues to uh, convey a, a sense of protection and, uh, and, and, and love that Christ has for us. Our God is a shepherd who offers care, he offers protection to all of his people. And for these three reasons, because we know that he is our Yahweh, our God, because we know that he has made us, because we know that he cares for us, these are three reasons that we should come to the Lord and worship in gladness and song. In Psalms 100, verses 4 and 5, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. The Lord gave King David plans for the temple, but he was prevented from building it because of, of war and <clears throat> because of, of being a man of war, because he, had, he was uh, distracted by that. But David carefully explained the construction details to his son, and Solomon built the the, the uh, temple uh, just as God had told David. The, the, he built it and he dedicated the temple uh, after his father's death, and he served it as the it served as the primary worship center there in Israel for for nearly four hundred years. So this temple was built, and there were always gates there at the temple that they entered through into to. To worship and thanksgiving so the holy sites uh, were a, a local place where they worship yahweh god uh, and they they could only draw near to the temple without entering they were not allowed to enter the temple and they came through the temple gates and they they came into an open area that was referred to here as courts it said enter his gates with thanksgiving come into his courts with praise and be thankful worshipers entered with thanksgiving they entered with praise into the courts and it was the progression of worship as, as they as they stepped into the courts and and the intensity grew as they worshiped thanksgiving was the first step uh in in the worship journey uh the writer insisted that genuine worship here is filled with thanksgiving and his praise god's character 
and 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 he is he is uh, the his character is what draws us to him. We we learn to love him because of who he is, uh, and and we love him because he loves us. He first loved us. Uh, we not only give thanks to him, but we bless his name. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. We we cannot misuse his name. We we are not supposed to, but rather we we use his name in blessing. Exodus 20 verse 7 says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And so many times a day people do take the name of the Lord in vain, but God tells us that, that we are not to do that. To bless his name is to add value to it. To bless his name is to honor him. Uh, to add value to the name of, of the Lord is to to do the things he's asked us to do, to tell others about him, to to build his kingdom. And uh, so we we do we do uh, uh, good things, but we confess him as our Lord and Savior to all. And uh, we give him credit for all the things that are done that are good. So we, we bless his name. Uh, we, we speak to those who are non-believers, and we speak to those who are believers. We speak of his blessings to those who may need blessings in their own life. In verse 5, it says, For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth unto all generations. There were pagan deities here uh, in ancient Near East. And in contrast to those pagan deities, we see here that, that the writer says, For the Lord, he is good. He is a God of judgment. He is a God of mercy. He is a just God. He, he, he's a God of mercy that he does not want to punish us for our sin, but he's a just God, which means he must do, he must make a, make, there must be a penalty for our sin. So he is a, a God of love. He overflows with mercy for all people. Uh, his mercy is everlasting. Uh, the Hebrew word speaks of eternal love and eternal mercy. Uh, it's a nature of God reflected in, in the declaration of how he so loved us when he sent his son that we talked about earlier in John 3.16. God proved, his, his, proved faithful to his people in the Old Testament. And indeed, uh, he, he assures us that he will remain faithful to us for all generations. Um, his truth endureth to all generations. You know, places and customs... And history are, are always changing. Uh, there's a movement today to to tear down uh, statues, to tear down things that honor people. But there's there's nothing that changes with God. God, uh, His mercy, His truth will endure unto all generations. It never changes. His word does not change. What what He wrote. And what was written in the Bible by those that he chose to write is still true today, and it will be true to the end. Uh, he, he doesn't change. There's only one way to, to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ, his son. That's through faith in him and through repentance. And, and that never changes. And his love for us never changes. He loves us, and his truth carries uh, throughout it's a steadfast truth that the love stead, a truth that we can depend on and a love that we can depend on that never changes our God our help in ages past is our hope for years to come he who was faithful will be faithful he is worthy of our thanksgiving and our praise you know we saw in verse 2 that our service uh, to others was an act of worship to God but when we get here to verse 4 the emphasis turns to corporate gathering of God's people applied to Christians uh, this this can be seen as an exhortation for us to gather as a church enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise this is this is his exhortation through the writer here for us to enter and gather and worship together in Hebrews 10 25 10 24 25 said let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You see, when we we see the things that are going on in our world today, and we see people um, turning against God, this should cause us as Christians 
as believers to want to worship together, to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together because we need each other and we need God. So we should be gathering together and, and gathering strength from each other as we, as we depend on God and we depend on Christ for all of our needs. Uh, the people of God are strengthened and God is blessed when we gather together to worship him and to sing praises together. That's why it's so important for us as Christians that, that we find a good Bible teaching, Bible believing church. Uh, and and if, if you're at home today and, and uh, you're not providentially hindered, uh, uh, God wants you to worship with us and to be in church. I know that uh, we provide these means of, of our live stream worship and Sunday school and other other preachers are on television. I, I hear so many times from uh, from some of our shut-ins how they watch different preachers on television, and that's that's great. And and I am so glad that we're able to to do uh, the live stream and that we're able to to bring God's word into your homes. But if if you're able, if you're not providentially hindered, um, God wants us to to be together to worship Him and to praise Him to to encourage each other. And to join together as we offer praise, to to come together in corporate worship. So my prayer today would, would be for you that first of all, if you're one at home who does not know Christ as your Savior, that the day would be the day of salvation. But if you are a, a Christian, if you are someone who is uh, not providentially hindered, you're not sick or not not hindered by the fear of COVID or for some other reason, my prayer today is that you would find a a, a good Bible believing, Bible teaching church. Uh, I think we have a great one here at Whitefield. We're blessed with Pastor Mike McMinn and Pastor Joey and Abigail for our youth and children. And we are so blessed to, to have s such a great church and a loving church. We would love to have you come and join us if you, if you do not have a home church. Our goal is never to take people from their home church, but our goal is to, to bring people into worship that may not have a church and are looking for a place that they can come and gather together, as God's word has told us here, to enter his gates with thanksgiving and come unto his courts with praise. Our doors are open unto you, and uh, we would welcome you to come and worship with us this uh, next Sunday. Uh, we would be glad to have you anytime. Uh, just thank you so much for joining. It has been such a blessing today to study, and I pray that you'll have a great Thanksgiving. I pray that as you gather with family and friends, that uh, the love of Christ would be evident and that we would, we would understand the God we serve is the only God and how much he loves us and uh, how much he wants to be a part of our life. And I pray that if he's not, that you would make him a part of your life today. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, and, and I'm just blessed to be able to, to teach this lesson. Uh, and thank you again. Uh, we're, we're so grateful that, that you would join us and, and listen to Whitefield Baptist Church as we, as we try to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to, to all nations. Thank you again. I pray you have a great week and a great and thankful Thanksgiving. I